Hello and welcome to another Build a Soil YouTube episode. You can already tell a lot has changed since the last episode. Now, we really want to document all these plants growing every week, sometimes twice a week, depending on the stage, but I also live a busy life and run a business. And last weekend left to Boston to go to the NECAN. I met a number of you, it was a really, really good time. So I'm glad that I went, we had a booth there, but that means that we did not do a video update. And on Monday, I wanted to record, but we've been busy. So now it's Friday. It's been basically two weeks since we've recorded. And so it, there's been a lot that's changed. Today is day 28, so it's been four weeks since we transplanted. It's been a couple weeks since we've filmed and you just need to see the update. So today is a walkthrough, a plant update. I'm gonna share with you everything that we've gone through, my experience so far with the blue mats. It's been really good, but I'm gonna go over all of those details. We'll talk about the earth boxes. We're gonna talk about the new tray to grow and the moisture levels, what we're experiencing and what we might do in the future. Also, maybe some of our plans for how we're gonna run that in flower. So in any case, let's just get started. Let's start over here on the earth boxes. So you can see they're pretty tucked back. Yesterday I pulled them under again. And so that's why a number of them are kind of bent weird like this. I don't worry too much about it. I let them fight their way through. And then as I get deeper into flower, I'll start to make sure that everyone has a clean place to grow. But for now, I wanna show you what I'm doing to keep it under these screens. I threw the last screen up after the last video and I don't really like these bungee ones, but they're getting the job done. So the bottom line is just use something that's gonna work as far as making a canopy when you only have two plants in a big area, this is a big difference maker. Another option, which I never get to show here that I think is super important, if you're a home grower, and I could put four earth boxes here, I, wouldn't, I almost wouldn't need the screen. I can just make sure the branches are tied together. Like, I don't have to really bush them out. I can just flip the flower and it'll fill the entire area. When we've put six plants in here or more, it fills the entire area without even trying. But two plants, it can be a lot more awkward, especially if you're growing from seed, you've not grown those genetics before. They could be acting differently, even within the same seed pack. So we're gonna discuss what to do. Um, we'll show you the hand watering and the four x four, how it's going. It's crushing, but there's different structure there. So we've had to change the way that we're maintaining it. We'll show you that. And then we're just gonna watch them as they flower because it's time. And today has been four weeks and that's almost too long, but we've been waiting for this quadrant to fill up. I'll show you in a second. And so it is what it is but it's time to flower. And so we're gonna be flipping the flower on Monday or Tuesday next week. I'm gonna record an episode on Monday or Tuesday going over the final steps. I'm gonna to be top dressing. I'm gonna to be changing the Niwa recipe to make sure that we're following the environmental protocol. But today, I'm just gonna show you around. And then I'm gonna discuss the next step, which is cleaning up the lowers, tucking a little bit more, and basically getting ready to flip the flower as far as the shape in here. So let's continue. These are the earth box side. You can see both the Dominion and the 3.0 soil are both looking really good. It's gonna be fun to see the difference in flower. These are all from seed packs, so none of them are a clone. They're not gonna be identical, but it'll still be fun to see the side-by-side -side trial going on. What I do with the earth box, for those of you that don't know, is we top dressed when we started. I actually, if you wanna look down here, we put some leaf in here from when we stripped it up. You can see it's pretty clean under here. This is the goal, but there's still some lowers that just are gonna to be too low. So these little branches here, they're gonna to have to come off. There's just no point. So I'm gonna cut this off, the leaves, everything basically below the screen I'd like to remove. And then up top, a number of the leaves that bunch and overlap, I'm gonna remove some of those. But underneath, we've already done a defoliation. You can see here once. And I just went and put all the leaves right in here. And so it's decaying. You can see all the feeder roots that are up in it. And so you can see these roots push through and they've already been decomposing all of that Build-A-Flower top dress and all of the craft blend, and they're working their way through the leaves with all of the different small life forms that are in here. So that's a good thing. That's what we're doing. You don't have to use the leaves. It's just that we wanted to put some living material similar to when we chop and drop cover crop, but there's no cover crop in the earth box. The good news is we can mound these heavy. And so since these are really big plants for an earth box, I mean, this is like a bag and a quarter, bag and a half of soil, 10 gallons at most with a few gallons of water under there. We're gonna to top dress this before we flip to flower on Monday or Tuesday. We'll go over that and exactly what we use. But look at this, look at the stock. That's my thumb, like it's pretty crazy. So it's a huge stock, really healthy plants. This is the Strawberry Deluxe from Dominion Seed Company. And I'm very excited about it. Strawberry Deluxe is a strawberry diesel. And that has, you know, a lot of 
a lot of people like the Strawberry Diesel. But then crossing that to the Smuckers, which I found out was a Chem D Hindu Kush. Very excited, I love Chem D crosses. And I guess this one was the most Smuckers smelling, tasting plant when all the others had the fuel. And so found that really interesting. There was kind of a wild card that Tommy chose to breed with. And so we'll see how it turns out. I'm really excited about all of these though. All of these are the same uh, pack of seeds, just different seeds, all of them. Let's go to the tray to grow. It's a jungle in here. Like I can't even really move to show you. So I'm gonna try and climb back here. So Dave can come a little closer. All right, so I'm standing <clears throat> like on the tray to grow area. You can see it's fully filled the quadrant where the earth box, if you take a step back, you can see it's not to the front of the net here. And that's fine. It just has taken a little bit longer where these are pushing through the other side and really taking advantage of all the soil that there is in the tray to grow being much larger than the earth box, but acting similarly. Now I'd like to talk about the moisture before I forget. And I want to talk to you about it because I'm seeing some yellow, slight yellow tips on these leaves where I don't really see that as pronounced anywhere else in the grow. It is, it is normal to see a little bit of that. I think sometimes the problems that we see in plants affect the grower more than they affect the plant. I think Miles told me that and I liked it. So I'm not really worried about it, but I'm always concerned. And so when I look at the moisture, it started to paint a picture. The eco width that's buried in the bottom, it's at 57%. And that one is buried all the way to the bottom where it wicks the moisture. We have another one in the top and that one's been reading about 45%. And so when we take readings, like even in the earth box, I was surprised as they got to 45% and was thinking that was too wet. It may be the earth box is down to that same 57% in the very low portion. I haven't put an eco width in the bottom, but we do let those get dry. And that's part of the power of the earth box is that we let the res get dry and then we water. This is never dry. And so it goes through like, they won't always be full. It goes through a little bit of a cycle. And so I can see in here that this isn't full. It goes down and up and down and up. The water kind of flows here in the tray to grow, but the wicking mat is always wet, which means you can see like roots firing out of here. It's always moist and it wicks it all the way to the top and the cover crop is firing and it is just raging. And it's made a faster, more leafy growth, but I think it might be slightly too wet. And so I'm gonna send it, I'm gonna let it ride. But as we get deeper in flower, if I still think it's too wet and it's not doing as good as it could be, we're gonna start to crop steer a little bit because later in flower, I think it'd be beneficial to have some dryback and not have a steady, constant moisture the entire time. Maybe that'll lead to us doing some tests where we do one constant moisture and maybe we do one without from clone. So we can do a comparison maybe of the wash percentage or at least just what the trichomes look like and um, see if there's anything identifiable. But that's gonna be the future of messing with the Trader Grows. It is super simple. You just do a quarter turn on the valve and that uh, stops the water. The plants are raging, so they're gonna drink pretty quickly and that would bring the moisture level down uh, pretty quickly. And um, then I could tinker. To automate that, I'm thinking maybe there's a way to put like a timer for a hose, connect that to the reservoir, have that step down into the tubing that goes to the Trader Grow and put that on a timer. It would only open my res to the tray to grow on a timer once every couple of days or once a day or whatever we wanted. So there is a way to fully automate maybe some steering there. And that'd be cool because on the earth box, I can't necessarily automate it. All I can do is when it's dry, wait a day longer or I can fill it then. And so there's ways to kind of play with that. So that's exciting. Just something to talk about. You can see it's really pushing all the way around and I'll show you when I get through the quadrants what I'm gonna do to pull these under one last time because I've gotta keep them low. I'm gonna run out of space. It's a jungle in here and it's gonna explode with growth, especially in these sub-irrigateds, I'm really worried. We, we might just over, have overdone it. These are gonna stretch a lot. So I've not run the genetics. I'm kind of just predicting that, but my prediction is they're gonna stretch really hard. Uh, look here in the center before I move on to the next quadrant. You can see that there's a number of these that like these are taller. So what I start to do when I pull the branches way out is I crisscross other branches to make sure that there's some in the middle instead of leaving big gaps. Today, as I go around, I'm gonna make sure and tuck some of these taller ones back towards the middle and keep it as even as possible in here. But realistically, when I flip the flower, this whole screen's gonna jump and I can't really predict where. So I like to just clean it up below, give it as much opportunity to fill the screen as possible and flip it, just let it rip and see what happens. So this one has been slower. Let me set the coffee down. I got some scissors because I want to chop and drop and I've been waiting. In fact, the, the cover crop is a little bit overgrown for how I normally like it. You can see it's just huge in here. I'll kind of push that down. These leaves are just massive. 
So things are growing really healthy in here. You can tell they've tapped into the blue mat. Everything is just jumping faster than I'm used to. So I need to chop and drop this cover crop and that's gonna be its top dress for this bed. But this one from Seed, these are the Coop by the Funk, is just vegging a lot slower. It's taken a while to fill the screen where this one's pushed to the edges and I'm trying not to let it totally dominate. And so what I do is I've got like one up here that's pushing. I'll just push it a little bit further and that's it. And so each one of these, I just want it to keep going so that it stays flat. And that's really the name of the game is just tucking it all underneath this thing. I'll chop and drop in a minute. I just wanted to show you that that's a big goal today is to chop and drop this. Probably not gonna film it all, but I'll have De Dave hang out maybe while I do the front of the bed and get it all dropped. And then I was thinking about putting like maybe the tripod over there and just pointing it down and I'll do a whole bunch of work in here. We can kind of speed it up, but there's not a lot of angles. We've basically grown in the whole 10 by 10 and normally I've been leaving a quadrant open or something so we can get inside the tent. I don't know what to expect. We may overgrow this entire tent this time, but I'm looking forward to it. So uh, let's move on. Excited about the coop by the funk. Excited to chop and drop this cover crop. If you can see, it's just raging. Look under here, you can't even see the blue mats. I mean, they're completely grown over and they're working so well. And so someone even asked on the YouTube, they're like, man, have you ever buried the blue mat tape at the bottom? So that when it gets dried out, it sub irrigates. And I thought, man, that'd be a really cool idea. I'd never thought of that. So more stuff to try in the future. All right, let's come over here, sneak through. All right, so these are the uh, dog's breath and I'm excited. That's from Covert and I'm really excited about them. You know I like those Chem D crosses and it's just taken over. It's almost mapped the screen here. There's double overlapping light in this area. So you get a lot more explosive growth towards this side where there's nothing over on this side. I did swap out the light we did have a, a board with four lights on it. This is the six. So I swapped it for a new Magnolia six from High Grove and that's featuring the new Evo diodes. Um, so it's got the latest tech. Those are available at buildasoil.com if you're interested in the grow lights. I really, really like these Magnolias. So check it, let's go underneath. You can see the cover crop. I've got the humidity pointed, you know, normally it's pointed this direction, but that would be blasting me. So I've just kind of got it moved under the plant for now. And these are running off blue mats with the drip rings. And look at, you can't even see the drip rings. They're completely buried under here. There's the drip ring right there. And so it's pretty cool that the drip ring is just in there doing its job. Now let's take a look and see where we're at. 36 right now. So that's, that is the wettest it will get. And I've got it really pushing at the bottom of that curve because I've got cover crop in here and I've got the plant pushing really hard. Let me go see where I've got that calibrated on the carrot because these ones have come pre-marked. So let me take a look. So I am about halfway between the gravity and the 15 PSI. I'm on 10 PSI, so it makes sense. I think I've got it dialed just perfect. If I were to drop it a little bit because I really wanna get it wet, I risk flooding it. And 36 is pretty low, but it's not flooded. And so I think that I can leave it at this setting and that'll allow a nice swing down to 36 and about up to 85. Later, when we get deeper in flower, we can discuss whether we wanna push that above 100 or whether we wanna keep it in this range. And I think part of me is going to be basing that on how big the swing is, the container size, and for me, mostly just what the plants look like and my gut, and we'll discuss that as we get deeper in flower. But man, pretty cleaned up in here. What I've got to do today is like, some of these lowers just aren't gonna make it, so I've gotta defoliate a lot of this stuff. And that'll be part of my task before we get to flower. Honestly though, it's clean enough under here. If I was super busy, I could just flip to flower right now and call it a day. But a little bit of work to remove some of this lower, I think it's gonna keep it cleaner and give a little bit more yield up top. At this point, I'm almost not worried about yield. It's gonna be too much to trim again. And so you just have to decide personally, this is your grow. If you've got a tent and it's for head stash, some of these extra things that we do are just because it's fun and, and it looks really pretty and it keeps a very healthy, organized plant, but besides the critical maintenance of like good airflow, good humidity, stripping it so that you're not completely shrouded and overlapping moist leaves, you don't have to be perfect and you're still gonna have super high quality and you're gonna have more than you know what, know what to do with. And that's really the goal is to replace having to go see the guy, right? And to not feel like, man, every time I spend my hard earned money on this plant, I'm feeling like maybe it's something I shouldn't do or whatever, where when you grow up for yourself, and you have abundance, 
you don't have to think of it that way. It's not like taking your resource from you, it's giving to your life. So that's how I feel. I'm really excited about this. And I'm gonna grab these scissors and start to chop and drop a little bit. We'll talk later about the tray to grow as we get deeper in flower about the moisture, but I'm just kind of monitoring right now. It's the first time I've used them. The cover crop is growing wild. The plants are completely taken over this entire quadrant. So it's pushing even harder than the earth boxes and that's hard to do. Earth boxes just rage, something about them. Of course, a lot more soil and earth boxes are hanging. So they're still very, very impressive. But when I show you the four by four, it's pretty cool to see what you can do with a good environment in this, in this area where there's so much more light as far as the space, because it's a bigger quadrant and potentially the automatic watering, because you'll see the four by four is smaller, but those we transplanted as smaller plants. One of the things you'll notice though, is that they're beautiful and we've been hand watering. So all of these things work. There's no one right way to do it. And this pressure system, um, when the video came out, a lot of people were commenting saying, hey, like overkill for a four by four bed. We also have these two containers running on the same pressure system, but it's total overkill. You don't need it, you could do gravity. For me, I was excited because a lot of people are running the, the hose directly into the blue mat. And I thought, man, that could be a major flood if something ever went wrong, like that 1% chance the hose breaks or something. And so this system using a pressure pump is a lot safer because at worst case scenario, you'd have the volume of your reservoir empty. And worst case scenario, if it was full, full, and immediately when you left, something happened. Usually it would have reduced the volume, maybe half your reservoir is there. And let's say the worst case scenario, a hose bus, your reservoir might spill or it could empty all of it. When you get these blue mats dialed, I'm no longer worried about a flood. It's not like a accidental event. I know that when I am targeting below 50, which I like to get wet, I'm risking it. And when I monitor them and I see the pulse and I see the plant growing, I'm confident once I've set it to the bottom line and I've watched it go up from there and the plant is growing fast, I realize it's very unlikely I'll flood it. But if for some reason, um, I'm worried the pressure pump system allows you to mitigate that risk by having one size tank. And then the opposite is true too. It's like a $400 kit, I think, for the pump. It's kind of expensive, but to me, I was thinking if I have to pay someone to come to my house and water for me when I go out of town versus using a gravity system where I might have to have someone come fill the gravity if I can't put enough water up high enough to make it work the whole time. The other thing about gravity is that as your large reservoir empties and gets to the bottom, that creates a different level of PSI based on the amount of water and the height that it's at where this is constant. So it may not be necessary. Gravity totally works, but I was really excited to try like a commercial grade system in my little grow. And it's very strange coming in here and literally only looking at the earth box to see if I should add some water and everything else is automatic. It's the least amount of effort I've put into any grow. We've not added any supplemental products because everything's already been watered. We did the top dress that you saw and that is it. We've just been water only and it's a jungle. So um, enough talk. Let me get to chop and dropping this cover crop because I want to terminate it. I don't want it to compete and I want to put that material as living material to the soil. And why I think that's important is the top dress that we do is great. There's the compost that have some life to it. There's the dry amendments that have a lot of potential dormant life on it that activate when it gets moistened. But something about terminating living plant material and giving those organisms back to the soil, I think is different. I think nature can actually recycle life before it dies and it can transmute that to other areas. And so when you give living cells as part of that process, you're hitting another layer to the mulch layer and to feeding the plant really defeating the soil. But one of the things we've learned beyond water soluble is that plants can eat other organisms and can eat larger protein molecules, not just through water absorption. And I like talking about that, but it's clear when you start to take on these methods that something greater is going on. That's why we continue to do these things. So I'm gonna grab the scissors, we're gonna chop and drop, and then next week we'll be discussing the top dressing that we're gonna use. Since it's all automated watering, we don't have to use many water solubles. And then we're gonna let it rip. We're gonna flip and this thing's gonna be full. Uh, okay, set this down. And then see if you can kind of come over here. I'll turn this backwards for a minute. And essentially what I do is I'm just gonna start cutting all the big stuff. And you can pull a little bit because it's so young and gentle. It's not gonna pull super deep roots out, but I do like to just cut. Look at that, just beautiful cover crop. And then you can actually chop these it's totally up to you. Be careful with your fingers in here when you get going and you're trying to go fast, it's easy to nip something. Uh, the most important part is that I at least terminate it and pull and cut and get it dropped. You don't have to be perfect with it. 
Some people would take a lot of this and just feed it to their worm bin. That works great too. You can be really judicious. Like you can go through and sit here and make sure it's all chopped up fine. And that will help its breakdown be quicker, but you know, there's enough nutrition in here. I'm not terribly worried about it. I'm more looking to terminate most of it. If some of it grows, it's fine, but this will create a moist area down here where the feeder roots will come in and start to eat. Couple caveats here, okay? So I've got you here. If you do this regularly, we're not outdoors. And so I like to mimic nature, but we are indoors. And if you do this a lot and get it as big as I did, it can create such a matting of a layer and so much life that you might notice some of these decomposing mites up in your plant because they're overpopulating. If that happens, you can create more airflow in here and remove some of the mulch layer. I don't think we're at any risk of that happening in this particular setup where we're at right now, but I just wanna be aware that there's pros and cons to all of this, and I don't want you to be blind. I like to chop and drop heavy, and I've not had problems, but some people have had problems. And so it's all about learning as we go and bringing all these concepts together and you're gonna find a way to have success with it. So I'm gonna just keep going and we'll show you what it looks like. We may set the tripod up, but I'll show you what it looks like at the end as well. So I don't wanna cut the blue mat or anything, so I'm not just going straight into the mulch layer, but I am dropping everything. And then see down here, I could take clones of this if I wanted to right now. And so I'm not gonna come snip because I probably do wanna take some clones. I do see some lowers that haven't quite made it that would make good cuttings, but while you're here, I do want to remove these, right? So if you're going to take a clone, take a clone. Otherwise, you don't need to leave all these little tiny lowers down here growing. I plucked them off the stock. Okay. So I could get aggressive and go after all the stalks and make sure none of it regrows. But really, when it's mulch heavy like this, not a lot of it's going to keep growing. The worms will come up in here. It's going to be a buffet. Okay. The goal is to do this on the whole backside, which I'm going to have to kind of climb back there. We're also gonna to wanna to do it on these so that there's not a waste of material. We've talked about this a lot, and I think as a new grower, a lot of times you get a little intimidated by this step. You're seeing all this big plant material and branches that you're taking it off, and you just don't wanna do it. I urge you, just don't worry about it. Go cut some stuff off. Your plants will just focus that energy and they'll explode with growth. It's not an issue. Indoors, we've got this flat canopy, and this is kind of wasted space. Outdoors, the sun revolves around it. We get this nice Christmas tree shape. That helps support its own weight. If you make a flat shape like this outdoors, branches are just gonna break. So then you have to use a lot of screening material to tie it in. But when you let them take their natural shape, they can, they can be a lot stronger, especially if they're good genetics for your area. So this isn't always the formula, but indoors with a scrog screen, this stuff is dead real estate as far as light is concerned. And so it just doesn't grow as well. And it takes some of the energy the plant could be utilizing to put in the places that we want it selfishly as opposed to what the plant's trying to do and that's part of the goal here so that's important you got to do the lower cleanup like for instance this branch is just not going to make it up so i could take this as a clone as i want right which i'll probably end up come taking some there's plenty here but a lot of people would be scared to take it they're like that's a big branch but it's just not going to make it it's totally shaded out and so i might as well just take it okay that's what i want to share today let's look and see where i'm at on this blue mat 93, so this is getting the driest that it's been so far. Around 85, it would kind of kick. I bet you were probably activated and just starting to water right now, which means that when I come in a little bit later, could I expect to see that go down, not up, but we'll report back the whole way and I'll share with you the numbers that we're hitting. But what I look at is the plants. So when I first transplant, if it's wet or dry and the plants aren't happy, I'll water the plants. But once it's hooked up and you can see that the whole bed is filled with roots, you can just watch the plants and see how they're doing. The plants are healthy, so 93 is fine right now. In the beginning, that might've been too dry because the plants weren't established. You just gotta kinda, when it's automated, you gotta make sure everything's hooked up and vibing before you let it totally solo. That was a lot to cover. I wanna show you the four by four, and then I'll probably come back in here, but I'll do some work in here, and I'll show you what it looks like next week when we flip to flower. So let's go check out the four by four. Beak. <laughs> So I'm here in front of the 4x4, and this is the Aukid Genetics, and I mean, it's just gorgeous. The whole screen's full. Yesterday, I was about to tuck one, and right here, I snapped a branch off a top. I was so sad. I threw it under here. You know, when you're tucking stuff under the screen, you gotta be careful. You don't wanna just snap your branches. You gotta be gentle. Every genetic is different. These ones I found, I think they like to be topped more than like bent. And if I start to bend these a lot, they wanna be a little bit more brittle. 
as opposed to just being really rubbery. And that's not a good or a bad thing. That's just differences in genetic backgrounds. And so when I went to bend that, it snapped. And that has me feeling a little uneasy about trying to bend the rest. But essentially what I wanna do is anytime I have, like you'll notice this one's a lot taller. I top this one on like eight or 10 locations twice to keep it from stretching higher than the others because it's a stretchier girl. Even from the same pack, we're seeing the mother and the father. So we're seeing the halitosis leaning and we're seeing the Branson's Royal Revenge leaning. And so when I see the bushier, bigger leaves, that's more reminiscent. And then I see a little bit in between back there. So gonna be really fun to see what they bring. But at the same time, in one tent, I still wanted to keep her somewhat even because she's probably gonna stretch even more when I flip to flower. So this one, I'm gonna be tucking a little more aggressively. Stay right here, I'm gonna go around the other side. And so you can now see what I would do is I take this branch and I would just be as gentle as I can. Don't wanna break anything, let's see where we're at. And now I just flatten it. And then this one, flatten. Waited a little long because I wanted to show you, which means I have to push down lower than I would like. But getting everything spread out on the screen, see how much flatter it is now? That'll give these other ones a chance when it's time to flip to flower. So I'm gonna keep pushing. Wow, this is already Sorry. like, man, this is already like loud in here. So I'm very, it doesn't always mean something, but I mean, it can't be bad. So this one's more malleable than the other ones. That's why I'm doing this. I think the other ones I'm gonna let ride, maybe do some gentle tucking, but I at least wanted to show that to you so you get an idea of what I'm doing. I'm just moving them around the screen, taking up a little more real estate, but it is what it is. I can weave some of them back to the middle, all the way to the edges. This one will go around the corner. I'll move it back this way a little bit. Cool, now we're to the edges and low. So that's the idea here. I'm not gonna sit here and do the whole plant. Well, maybe I will. All right, see how that's a lot flatter? Okay, now none of those broke and they're a lot flatter. And so I could do the same here, but my suspicion is that one's gonna stretch a lot more. So I might actually leave these and just flip these to flower. Um, come down under here, pretty cleaned up, but that one back there was harder for me to get to. So I wanna do some work and reach back there. A lot of these can come off now. All these little like, it's just small and underneath, it's not gonna do anything. So all this stuff can come off. I'm probably gonna take cuttings, so I'll leave this one. That'll be a good cut, but it's already blocked out. These big leaves are just blocking. So I can basically remove all of these big water leaves, they call them. I don't know why, <laughs> but the big, huge fan leaves, I'm just gonna take most all of these off. And it may look like a cat that got wet, your big, huge plant is now deflated in size, but they will aggressively return with new growth and fill up your screen and with more bud instead of leaf. And so I think it's, it's valuable to do this part. So that's the goal. If you want to really in depth, we've done this a lot. The goal is to remove pretty much everything up to the screen. You can leave stuff down like an inch like this, but every time I do that, I come back and end up finding that most of these don't jump and I have to just pull these anyways. Like these little two one right here, they're just not going to make it. This one's receiving a lot of light. It might jump, especially if I bend this one over a little bit, but now I'm blocking this. So it's kind of like, just pick what you think the right decision is. Don't overthink it, get the job done. Make sure you have a pretty full canopy. And then we'll talk about next week, changing the environment, changing the lights to 12 hours so we can flip to flower. These Bransons and the halitosis, the cross here, the halicin. I'm really looking forward to this one, especially after bending that, it's not been that loud this whole time. So anyways, we'll, we'll keep you up to date. And then next week we'll flip to flower. We'll talk about all those details. If you've got questions about any of this stuff, questions about maybe some of the, what happened over the last couple of weeks as I obviously didn't update it as much as I'd like, drop those questions in here. I'll do my best to answer them um, in the comments. And then anything that looks like it's important, we'll make sure that we answer that on an FAQ. We've got plenty more FAQs for the season. So drop those questions, um, like, comment, tell your friends about this. And until next time, I'll see you on the next Build a Soil episode.